What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about how we can use the actual geometry of our objects in order to inference, model, and do a lot more. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so first off, I just want to make sure that you have an understanding of how hidden geometry actually works inside of SketchUp. So let's say that we've got objects like these um, that are more complex shapes with like curving faces. Well, in reality, these objects don't actually have curving faces. So if I triple click on the sphere, for example, notice how it's actually made up of a number of flat faces. So the flat faces all work together in order to create this curved look, right? And if you wanna see that hidden geometry, you can go over to your display settings, toggle hidden geometry, right here. So there's some interesting things you can do with that, which we'll look at in a minute, but just know that anything with a curved face actually is made up of a bunch of flat faces with the edges softened between those faces in order to create a curved face. And so we can do a lot of different things with the hidden geometry once we understand that. So one of the biggest is we can use this in order to inference in our object. So right now, for example, let's say that I wanted the exact middle of this sphere to be aligned with this point right here. Well, I can kind of mouse over this and I can find a bunch of, uh, I can find a bunch of um, inference points and other things like that, but I can never really be sure that I'm right in the middle of the sphere, right? However, if we triple click on this object right here, notice how that's going to allow us to see that hidden geometry. Well, now that we can see the hidden geometry, I can look at this and see where the center of my sphere is. So I can tell that the center line of the sphere is right here. Well, what that means is that means I can use the move tool to find a point that's aligned with that center point because the inferencing is actually locking to these points in here. And then I can click and I can move this up like this. So I can use this to perfectly align the center point of this object. And so I could also right click on this object, find the center, and then I could triple click in here in order to find the middle point of this object and place it on that central point very easily, just like this. So you can use that hidden geometry to quickly inference and find different things having to do with your objects. Okay, and so that works without actually toggling hidden geometry on, but if we come over here and we look at this sphere right here and we toggle hidden geometry on, what this is gonna do is when this is off, right, I can only select the whole thing or none of it, or I can triple click on it in order to get that stuff in here, but it's really kind of clunky because the only thing you can get is the face or all of the edges at once. However, if I toggle hidden geometry on, what that's gonna allow me to do is that's gonna allow me to select everything in the object. So if I click and drag across this, right, I can select half of the geometry that makes up my sphere right here. So what that means is that means that I can come in here and using this geometry, I can create my own custom shapes like this. So I can uh, cut this off in order to create like a bowl shape or something like that really easily. So I can use the hidden geometry to see what makes up an object. And so then I can select that individual geometry and then I can adjust things. I can delete things, other things like that in order to create more custom complex shapes in SketchUp. And so another thing that you can do with the hidden geometry is once you understand how it works and how to see it, you can use it as a path in order to extrude an object. So let's say for example, that we had this sphere right here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn this on to parallel projection view so that we're straight on. And let's say that we wanted to add a band around the middle of the sphere. Well, right now that could be really tricky, right? Like I could come in here and I could draw a circle, but then getting it to actually like go around the sphere could be really tricky. Um, I could try drawing a circle um, based on the top point as a path and then trying to find this end point, other things like that. I could do that, but it's going to be really clunky. And so what I want to do in this situation is I want to use this edge as a path. And so the way that you're going to do that in the online version is you're going to take this and you can't run the follow me tool yet because these are softened edges for some reason. It doesn't like that. So I'm just going to toggle the soften edges off, but notice how I have this selected. Well, now I can activate the follow me tool and I can use this to extrude around the outside of this object, just like this. So it's a really easy way to use the hidden geometry of your object as a path inside of SketchUp. You can also, if we look at this object right here, for example, you can use this hidden geometry as inference points to create your own paths. So if I was to come in here and draw edges like this, notice how I can use this to create this kind of like spiraling shape. Okay, so then I can just come in here and I can just draw a circle 
right here. And if this fills in, just make sure you have hidden geometry turned on and just toggle it off. And so what we can do is we can use this path as, as an extrusion path in order to create like a pipe that kind of spirals down in here. Now, one thing to note about this is this is currently kind of split by this top face, and I think it's gonna be split either way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take that whole thing. So I'm just gonna take the path, and I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode and create a copy, copy off to the side like this. That way I can just select the path, use the follow me tool and extrude it just like this. Then I could make it a component and move it back. And then I could use the rotate tool in copy mode and create an array like this. So you can use this in order to create shapes that kind of follow along paths like this by using the hidden geometry to dictate where your paths go. All right, so another cool thing about using hidden geometry is it gives you different faces that you can work with to create different things. So like, for example, let's say that I wanted to create like a simple tire or something like that. I could come in here and draw across these faces right to split everything and then start extruding things out um, you could definitely do that but you've already got some of that geometry kind of ready made inside here right so if you go in and turn on your hidden geometry for example um, first off notice how i can't push pull anything in here right now because i can't find any of the individual faces but if we toggle that hidden geometry on and then I push pull this out and we'll say we'll push pull it out maybe by like two inches. Um, the scale is not really great in here, but notice how I can push pull these two objects really quick. And then I can draw lines across here in order to add faces. So I can use this to create like a little tread piece that goes in here. Well, then I can take that tread piece. And we're going to select it. And I may want to go ahead and right click in here and find a center point first. But we're gonna go ahead and select that tread piece and then use the rotate tool in copy mode in order to copy this geometry. And then I'm gonna type in times and maybe like 12 or something like that, just like this. And so now what we've got is we've got this half tire shape in here with tread on the outside of it. Well, then we can take this tire, we could use the move tool in copy mode and we could mirror it to a negative one then we'll just move our pieces back together. And so if you look at this, we've got this kind of like cool tire shape. And so the other thing about using this kind of geometry right now is if we look at this, notice how we can only apply one material to it from the outside of this object, right? I can only click on here and make it one color. However, however, I'm gonna go ahead and undo that and I'm gonna turn my hidden geometry on. Well, once we toggle our hidden geometry on, we can actually, paint different parts of an object by selecting them. So for example, let's say that I wanted to add a stripe right here and a stripe right here. Well, with hidden geometry on, I can just select that geometry and then apply a material to those stripes. So let's say I wanted these interior stripes to be a different color. I could just select them and just apply a different material like this. So what this does is this allows us a lot more control over where materials go on our objects. Um, just by using that hidden geometry. So notice how I'm not having to like unsoften anything or anything like that. It just literally lets me come in here and apply materials to those individual faces. And then if I toggle my hidden geometry off, you can still see and select the whole thing, but those materials are applied to different individual faces. So understanding how the geometry in your objects works is really going to give you a lot more control over what you can create in SketchUp. But leave a comment below. Let me know if you found this helpful. If you have any questions, I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.